Capsi Podcast Series, Conversations on African Philanthropy. Uh, welcome to yet another episode with me, Peginko Simoyo, on our conversations on African philanthropy. I'm excited to shoot this uh, episode at the margins of a meeting that we are having here in Mombasa, uh, focusing on the contribution of the non-profit sector towards dignified jobs uh, and fulfilling uh, work. Uh, Philippa, uh, you are joining us on, on this evening. Uh, but before I do that, let me just say, Philippa Lawrence is with the AUDA NEPAT, which is the African Union Development Agency NEPAT. You work as the project assistant for institutional development. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you. I, I just was thinking right now that maybe in this meeting you and uh, Walter mm -hmm. are probably the two youngest people <laughs> in the room. Because I was just looking around and thinking, who else is a young person? Yeah. Probably it's, the, it's just the two of you. I mean, there are others who are young. Yeah. But in terms of, you know, uh, the, the age groups that we're talking about, I mm -hmm. think we are the... How does it feel to be in a room full of older people, let's say different uh, yeah. uh, older people, but you, are the, but you are the youngest? I mean, I, since I've started working at AUD and APED, like I said earlier, Prof, I've often found myself being one of the youngest people in the room. And sometimes it can be intimidating, but as time goes by, you realize that you have to be there, especially when these projects and these conversations are around youth. Yeah. And it's important for young people to be at the table and part of the conversations that are essentially about them and their future. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So I think it's, it feels empowering. And I think it's a privilege to be able to be part of conversations yeah. like that. Yeah. So in other words, um you know, most young people would start maybe being nervous uh, <laughs> to be part of the conversations. Yeah. But over time, it's important to actually have your voice. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you don't, then, you know, you almost don't want to leave it to the discretion yeah. uh, of those that are currently holding the space in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, is that what you are saying in, in short? Yeah, so, um, like I was saying, it it can often be be quite intimidating but um, eventually you you find your voice and you especially if we're dealing with for example projects with there yeah. are many youth projects yeah. within yeah. NEPAD um, which is of course the organization I work for and often young people aren't part of those conversations yeah, yeah. Um, and sure I, I mean I do find myself sometimes being nervous um, and it, it often takes time for me to express my opinions. Yeah. Although I do find it, I, I often like listen and I leave and I'm able to um, go back and, and speak process. about my yeah. experience yeah. and process everything. Yeah. Um, so, but I think as time goes by, you, you find your voice yeah. and you realize yeah. why you actually have yeah. to be there. So if you were to give advice to young people who are just maybe coming out of tertiary education, mm -hmm and they are looking for opportunities to, to, to take or they've been granted opportunities but they are scared. Mm -hmm. uh, what would be some of the you know, basics that you would say, mm -hmm. you know what, this is what you need to do. Of course, it would be different from one individual yeah. to the next, but there are some things that could be universal and mm -hmm. basic. Yeah, so I think, you know, coming from a humanities okay. background, coming out of university, I think many fellow humanities students um, often wonder what their future may look like. So I think really looking for opportunities and seizing them, even though it may seem intimidating, is really important. And once you're in the space, even though it's, it, it can be, you know, intimidating to be there, is to really um, just take the opportunities, even though because your voice is important yeah. um, and you are there for a reason and you deserve to be there. So I think often overcoming imposter syndrome or, or things like that as young people yeah. in spaces yeah. like yeah. this yeah. is quite a big, yeah. big challenge yeah. that I think many people, young people in my position could possibly yeah. also relate yeah. to. So as a young person, would you say there are things that you need to do in order to prepare yourself 
mm -hmm. for spaces like this, mm -hmm. for entering institutions like NEPAD, yeah. I mean for others, it would be universities. Yeah. What, what, what are the kind of preparations as young people mm -hmm. um, or young people should do, you know, you know, having the benefit of having gone through maybe different pathways yourselves mm -hmm. and you are now in your early career stage, mm -hmm. but you're already in an institution that is huge and mm -hmm. most people would really want to yeah. have an experience of that. What, what are some of the things that you personally probably did to prepare yourself mm -hmm. for this for this um, moment some people yeah. would say you know uh, i positioned myself yeah. others would say um uh, what's the usual term now <laughs> when people say i want something i manifested uh, and all of those things okay. what are those things that you would say you know probably if i do this or you do that mm -hmm. you are actually making your life maybe a bit predictable mm -hmm. in terms of dealing with such So spaces. you mean how to sort of prepare yourself yeah, to yeah. enter spaces yeah, yeah. like that? Yeah. yeah. So, um, <coughs> like I said, finding opportunities, they're all over. Yeah. And, yeah. for example, if you, if you see an ad for an internship, really familiarize yourself with the institution. So, for yeah. example, in my case, I would have read up on Agenda 2063 and really understood it and... Um, really understood what the the directorate that I would be placed yeah, in yeah, yeah. Um, was meant to do and how I what the eventual aim is of that yeah, and how I yeah, could go in there and yeah. what difference I could make yeah and then um, I also wanted to probably say um, growing up as a young person mm -hmm. in the context of South Africa mm -hmm. um, growing up obviously in the post apartheid mm -hmm. uh, state um, you know, the, the life of a young person is completely different from the life yeah. of a young person who grew up in the 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. 80s, and uh, potentially some time around the early 90s. Um, what would you say were some of the key moments that shaped you to be the person that you are today as a young person? Um, I think I'm um, also, we're often, we're shaped, shaped by our families yeah. and our yeah. backgrounds and being a colored South African. Yeah. Um, I often hear stories of my grandfather, who was a political journalist yeah, yeah. for the Sunday Times in apartheid, and just experiences shared by my, my parents and my family about yeah, how they yeah. experienced their youth. And my parents would always tell me that, you know, you're living our wildest dreams, you know, you're living your ancestors' yeah, wildest yeah, dreams, and yeah. these opportunities are available to you, and it's a privilege to be able to contribute I mean, on a continental yeah, level, yeah, yeah, however small yeah. your contribution is, yeah, yeah. you know, you are so privileged and lucky to be yeah, given this yeah, chance. Yeah, yeah. So don't take it for granted, you know, take in as much as you can, yeah, read yeah, as much yeah, as you can. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, it's on the one side, it's an advantage and it's also a, a way to drive mm -hmm. you to doing uh, something for your life and yeah. in your case ending up you know mm -hmm. in a space like this. but on the other side it could be so much pressure yeah. uh, to be told that we actually went to fight yeah. for this freedom exactly now that you have it it's what almost like it's, it's it? almost it's almost like you can't fail yeah right <laughs> and if you fail it's almost like you know what what have i done exactly and yet uh, we all know that life is all about um failure and success and failure mm -hmm. is actually a recipe Mm -hmm. for actually succeeding later on in life and so was that exactly. a, was that a bit of a, a pressure for you to absolutely the, the fear yeah. of failing and disappointing your grandparents who fought <laughs> so hard for this freedom that you're enjoying i mean i think failure is it's necessary for yeah. growth yeah you know and walking into an institution like nepad as a young person yeah yeah you're going to fail you're going to make mistakes right. and right. i have before yeah. but yeah. i think as difficult as it was in that moment, further down you realize how much yeah. you needed that to yeah. shape you. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you, you won't go back and make those same mistakes yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so let's talk about maybe your background in terms of your, what you studied, mm -hmm. which then helped you to also maybe fit properly into uh -huh. the, the Pan-African space, because mm -hmm. Nepal is really 
part of you know this African Union uh, mm -hmm. agenda. You were already talking about you know reading about Agenda 2063, yeah. and this was before you even joined uh, in Nepal. Mm -hmm. So, what's your background? What did you study? So um, I studied at the University of Cape Town. Yeah. I did a Bachelor of Social Science and my majors were Politics and Governance and Industrial Sociology. Okay. And then I did a postgraduate diploma also at UCT, but that was focused on business communication. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. So of course my, my Social Science Bachelor's degree um, helped me with the theoretical knowledge and understanding the political landscape yeah. Yeah. of the continent. But then I also feel that although I jumped to the Commerce faculty, I find that the two qualifications really help because um, in NEPAD you deal with projects and yeah, understanding yeah. the background yeah, but also yeah. understanding how to write a proposal and you know do costing and and being able to speak yeah, in yeah, that way yeah, yeah. and it also teaches you you know teamwork and management and and how to really so what I'm trying to say is I really find that yeah. the, the two qualifications yeah. Yeah. have yeah. benefited me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, I am looking to do a master's before I'm 30. Yeah. Um, and my goal was to finish my postgrad and get some work experience. Right, right, right. right. And then yeah. really try and figure out what yeah. my thematic area of yeah. choice is. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So at this moment, have you started thinking about the topics that you want to work on or...? So I've been quite involved in the Social Protection yeah, and Financial Inclusion yeah, Project, yeah. which CAPSI yeah, yeah, is yeah, working with yeah. NEPAD on. Um, and that, I think, really sparked yeah, an interest for yeah, me, yeah. especially because it's cross-cutting, you know, when social protection is such a broad yeah, yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. So you get to deal with youth unemployment, underemployment, which is what yeah. we're here talking about as well yeah. today. Yeah. You know, inclusion for people with disabilities and children and also mental yeah. health and yeah. how important yeah. that is. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm definitely interested in going yeah. into that yeah. space. Yeah. And the thing with postgraduate studies, especially masters and your PhDs, I mean, even though it's really like career oriented, mm -hmm. uh, what then happens is that there's a bit of a shift when you move to doing a master's and PhD. Mm -hmm. You are now doing something that is going to have societal impact. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you want to choose a topic that you know is going to make some lasting legacy impact, but also that is going to stand, you know, almost the test of time. Yeah. Uh, but something that you are also going to be passionate about so that, yeah. you know, when you are bored, Maybe that's the only thing yeah. that you pick up and do. Yeah. Because it's, it's almost like a life a time of some, some sort. For example, if you do your master's and you move on to do your PhD, mm -hmm. it's really like a dedication of some sort. Yeah. So you want to choose a topic that you are passionate, really about, passionate about. But you also know that 20 years down the line, you will still be able to refer to it and say and this is what an I, 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 I... So I, I do get where you are going with the choice around social protection mm -hmm. and others. Great. So... I, I, I'm, I'm thinking as we are speaking here that, you know, youth or young people are not the same. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, earlier on, we had a conversation with another group of uh, colleagues who were talking about, you know, uh, the value and role of voluntarism, you mm -hmm. know, how they are working with young people, encouraging them to volunteer, uh, not just because they need to, but also because it's a pathway Mm -hmm. to getting themselves into maybe dignified or fulfilling jobs because at times you volunteer and then, you know, that is a transition yeah. for you to getting uh, employed. I just want to check, you know, with you whether or not you see that happening a lot among young people. Mm -hmm. uh, and if not, uh, what do you think are the barriers that uh, young people encounter when wanting to give their time, mm -hmm. give their services? Uh, but from a voluntary perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think <coughs> um, often like visibility, you know, they might not know where to access those yeah. opportunities. Yeah. Um, and also I think um, often, you know, voluntary work is free. Yeah. But yeah. I think yeah. the youth yeah. are, I mean, they do need some money, um, you know, as a student, as yeah. a young person. Yeah. yeah. And I think giving your time maybe for them or for, for youth who are wanting yeah, to go into yeah, that space yeah. that could be something that might be an obstacle yeah, for them yeah you know yeah. because it involves transport and involves many things and oftentimes yeah, yeah. they wouldn't be getting yeah, um 
compensated yeah. for that. So yeah. I think that's one thing. Yeah, yeah great. And then uh, I also want to touch on other areas. So when you speak to your, uh, not, not just colleagues, but other mm -hmm. young people, uh, what is the sense that you are getting when they talk about the kind of jobs in which them the kind of jobs in which they are or their colleagues are in mm -hmm. we are here of course talking about dignified and fulfilling jobs mm -hmm. so it's almost suggesting that not every job is mm -hmm. dignified or fulfilling mm -hmm. What's, what what are you hearing from other young people are they in, in jobs that uh, can mm -hmm. be classified as dignified and fulfilling or decent mm -hmm. So in the South African context, I mean, I even know some of my yeah, fellow graduates yeah, who yeah. can't <clears throat> find work in their fields. You know, these are, are people with degrees, people yeah, with honors or yeah, masters that yeah, are waiters. Yeah. Or, and I think they would not classify that to yeah, them as yeah, dignified work yeah. because they see themselves as being able to, to contribute more yeah, with their knowledge. Yeah. But how I would define dignified work and how I think my, my friends and colleagues yeah. probably would is where you're given the space to grow. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you're appreciated, there's growth opportunities yeah. and you feel like you're making a, a difference, you know, yeah. Yeah. that you're doing fulfilling work and you can yeah. see the impact yeah. that your work yeah. has. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but in other words, you're saying, even though that exists, it mm -hmm. may not really be something that is That's prevalent accessible. and accessible. Yeah. 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 So which is which means there's a long way to to go in Absolutely. order to actually uh, create that. Mm -hmm. um, the other element that I wanted to talk to you about is is, is what you are doing now. Mm -hmm. You know, within Nepal. Uh, obviously, the, the 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 disclaimer is that you are you are not uh, speaking on behalf of Nepal, mm -hmm. but we just have to make reference uh -huh. to to the work that you are doing because you are a classic example of a young person that most people would want to speak to in mm -hmm. order to get insights into how you have managed to work in, a, in an institution mm -hmm. like Nepal, but also the lessons that you are getting uh, uh, doing that. Can you maybe speak to us about what your function entails? Okay. I mean, earlier you started speaking about budgeting, yeah. project management, but yeah. you know, your day-to-day -day mm -hmm. functions, what do they entail? Yeah. So I started out at NEPAD <coughs> in 2022 as an intern, um, seconded through GIZ, and at the time I was working in the resource mobilization unit. And because that deals with all projects, yeah. I got exposure to m almost all the projects within NEPAD. Um, and now at the moment, um, most of my work within NEPAD is assisting the institutional development unit. Um, and what that entails is, for example, um, my bosses would come to me and say, we're thinking of a new project, for yeah. example, on yeah. social protection. These are our ideas and I would listen and then my job would then be to go and craft that into a proposal yeah. that we can now go and present to partners. Um, so I basically take their ideas and, yeah. and, and yeah. put it on paper, uh, also try and add my them. own. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, they would be busy and there'd be a partner meeting and they'd send me to go and represent the organization yeah, yeah. which i mean is quite intimidating yeah, i remember yeah, yeah i mean one meeting i had to go and meet they couldn't make it i had to go yeah. and meet with them the vice chancellor at Prito yeah, university of pretoria yeah, with yeah. an ambassador yeah yeah and um but it, it as intimidating as it was i felt really yeah. fulfilled yeah. when i talk yeah. i could tell yeah. myself i, I just yeah. did that yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know i just had a meeting yeah. with her yeah a so VC. what did mandela say it, it looks impossible until, until it's, done. it's done exactly <laughs> that was a prime example for me you yeah. know and yeah. sometimes you know we'd be in online meetings and they're like listen i'm in the middle of the airport i yeah. don't have yeah can you please take over? And then I'm not prepared at yeah, all, but yeah, somehow something yeah. just tells you, you know, you can do this. You were yeah, part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sell it, you know, yeah, get those funds, yeah, yeah. get them to buy yeah, in. Yeah. So, so other than the, the, the postgraduate degree that you did at UCT, which seems mm -hmm. to have some components of mm -hmm. project management, budgeting, yeah. how do you keep yourself updated with the trends i mean do you, do you upskill yourself yeah um or, you know so yeah at the moment i'm really trying to upskill myself in terms of excel yeah um which i think is very important yeah and i also you know keep abreast with ai yeah um yeah, yeah. and because i think people often see that as, as a threat but i think 
it can really be helpful yeah, if you yeah. use it yeah, responsibly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I try to keep abreast with, you know, tech the technology uh, and all the and trends all those around, advancements yeah. and yeah. those trends. Yeah. But I mean, I could. Oh, there's always room to improve. Yeah. There's always room yeah. for me to do yeah. more, and I think I'll constantly be learning. Yeah. But the other component is is not just technical skills. It's mm -hmm. also it's also the you know almost like the emotional intelligence, yeah. uh, which is something that you may you may never be taught. Yeah. Um, and and some that you develop over time, mm -hmm. and so you know. You know these ideas of getting into spaces mm. and winning it there. At times it may have nothing to do with your technical ability, but yeah. your your emotional intelligence and your passion for and what your you're passion doing. for what yeah. you are doing. Um, but you but you you find most young people uh, drawing from the emotional intelligence side of things. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah. True. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing that I also wanted to ask you about is so with exposure. Mm -hmm. um, especially exposure to new issues, mm -hmm. exposure to new cultures, to new contexts, traveling, yeah. also brings with it a widening of yeah. your horizons. Yeah. Um, has that been something that has um, been happening to you, especially in, within the context of you mm -hmm. working for a continental body? So what are some of yeah. the things that you have, you have, you have learned uh, or some of the things that we can say, even if I were to leave tomorrow in Nepal, mm -hmm. you know, these are the things that I think this this position has That's actually true. helped mm -hmm. me to get to where I am. Mm -hmm. Or can I say, what are the things that were probably not so obvious to you mm -hmm. uh, before you joined the Nepal? And now mm -hmm. that you have been with them for, I mean, for this, it's not a long time, mm -hmm. but, but it is actually yeah. a good time for a young person to have been in that position mm -hmm. for such a big institution? Yeah. So I think before I started working there, I didn't really know that much about NEPAD and what yeah, they were doing. Yeah. So, I mean, the exposure that I've gotten to the work that they do is invaluable. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have insight, so much insight yeah, into the projects yeah, and exactly yeah. what goes into that. Yeah. And also, I mean, with NEPAD, it was the first time I left South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, you know, was yeah, traveling yeah. with with this organization. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I get to know more about my continent, yeah, yeah. especially because I'm working for a pan-African organization. Yeah, I think it's yeah, so important yeah. to be exposed to other African yeah, countries yeah, and, and yeah. really get, yeah. get a so, sense. So at least we can compare South Africa to something. Yeah, uh, exactly. And, 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 and whether it's advantages or disadvantages, at least yeah. we can actually... You know, say actually in Nigeria, this is what I mm. see in Senegal, in Kenya. Yeah. You know, and 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 like you're saying, that's something that most people may not even have the opportunity to exactly. to, to actually to to actually just travel outside mm. uh, the country. And I, I mean, honestly speaking, if there's one thing that I think is useful for any person is the ability to travel. Yeah. Uh, you know, mobility is very very important. So even mm -hmm. for us at universities, what we do now is to try and raise resources. So that we also take our students along yeah. uh, to conferences for presentations, yeah. but also just encounter with others who are, who mm -hmm. are different uh, from them. Yeah. Um, and working for NEPAD means you are working in a multicultural environment. So let's talk yeah. about working in a multicultural environment. Um, I think you know people say <laughs> it could be challenging. There's different, but I think. Respect transcends all yeah, boundaries, yeah, you know, and it's been really interesting for me. I've met people from all yeah, across the continent, yeah. all across the world even, um, and learned so much about them and, and their culture, and I think it's great. Yeah. I think it's such a yeah, privilege. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, obviously, NEPAD and any other AU body or a policy body of that nature, development agency, means this you are constantly under pressure yeah. to meet deadlines yeah. you are constantly under pressure to deliver on particular mm -hmm. requests from member states and others and one of the things that i think we are not talking a lot about is how different today's young people and their contexts are from mm -hmm. your grandfathers for example mm -hmm. so we are now very much um, attuned and we are now aware of issues such as mental wellness yeah. uh, and others, which in the past were not mm. even a big deal. How do you first cope with pressure? Mm -hmm. Secondly, what do you do when you feel you are entering mm -hmm. a space where your mental 
uh, wellness is affected? Um, so, yeah, like you said, there are many <coughs> deadlines, lots of late nights, and because you know you have to meet this deadline. Um, and I think it's worth the sacrifice. It's not without stress. Yeah. And like I said, for example, sometimes if I find out to, if I find out tonight, listen, tomorrow morning yeah, you have yeah, to represent yeah, this yeah. agency. Um, somehow I feel like when I'm in there and I have no choice and there's no escape, I kind of switch on and yeah, I can just go, yeah. go ahead and do it. Whereas if I'm given the chance to sort of stay in the margins, then it, it's, yeah. it's more difficult for yeah. me to have my yeah. voice heard. But if I'm sort of put on the spot, yeah. then I find yeah. that I thrive better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then when you, <coughs> when, when, you have not raised that stage, but this mm -hmm. is almost like something that a lot of young people tell us these days mm -hmm. that, you know, um, maybe the kind of expectations, the kind of work that, you know, they do easily lends them into a space where they have to deal with mental wellness. Mm. Um, what would be, what would, what, what would be the things to avoid uh, uh, from your perspective, uh, especially for other young people who might find themselves in, 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 in spaces that are hard pressed, fast paced, mm -hmm. and lots of deliverable expectations? Um, I think just keep your eye on, on your personal development and remember yeah. why you're there. Yeah. You know, and remember that this is a chance for you to grow. And like we said earlier, failure is a pivotal for growth. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I'm lucky enough to sometimes, you know, be able to speak to someone if I'm having, you know, mental yeah. issues yeah. or, yeah. which I don't think most, most people don't have that privilege. So it's also okay to make use of the resources right. that are yeah. out really, there yeah. to help yeah. you to sort of just have yeah. someone to listen and speak to yeah. and yeah. you know things like if you can have access to career guidance or yeah. coaching yeah. It, it it's really helpful yeah. and and those resources are out there and they are available yeah. yeah yeah i was talking earlier to some colleagues here and telling them about one of my hobbies which is that i like going <coughs> excuse me i like going to the archives mm -hmm. and doing archival research and uh, this person was saying ah oh, but you know uh, we like the fact that you are doing this podcast because I mean the podcast because it's, it makes our life easier. We don't have to read because yeah. you know you, you are telling us about going to the archives. <laughs> Not many of us in our yeah. ages would go to the archives. Instead, <laughs> would want to to just listen to this listen and to you know. Podcast. Um, let's talk a bit about this phase of our lives where a lot of it is driven by AI. Mm. Um, what are the what are some of the limitations of this phase mm -hmm. and what are some of the advantages definitely there are lots of advantages in terms mm -hmm. of you know what you can use a technology for and and sort of but mm -hmm. like you said there are also some threats around it mm -hmm. uh, but if you put yourself in the context of today um, and listening to me saying i go to archives i yeah. <laughs> do this thing <laughs> yeah. so i felt like hey i'm so i take because the, the young person just said ah you go and do archives um, we, we we're not doing that yeah, right. i haven't just, done that we just want to listen to yeah. the conversation so yeah. is reading is reading a big issue for young people now i think if if i speak to my friends i do yeah. think especially like when studying they feel like they see reading it as more of a chore, you know, like it's yeah. something they have yeah. to do to. Yeah. But I still think that's something that AI can't replace right. Right. is right. building your knowledge in that way. Yeah. So I don't think that AI should be used, for example, to replace your work, yeah. like when writing yeah. a, a project yeah. proposal, for example. Maybe just use it to, I don't know, help you get yeah. your thoughts yeah. together yeah. Yeah. And, and phrase how you're going to do things. Yeah. But if it, you have to know what it is that you that you're trying to achieve with yeah, this project and yeah, that comes yeah, with knowledge and yeah, experience that yeah, ai can't really give yeah, you yeah so yeah. i don't think it will be able to replace yeah. philanthropic work for example because that i feel comes yeah, from yeah, the heart and yeah, it comes from passion yeah. yeah what drives you i have a passion i mean i've now really developed my passion for for africa and for being given this privilege to be involved yeah, yeah. in yeah. making a difference and a positive <laughs> impact on the continent um, so I think that is really what drives me yeah, and, yeah. and 
taking opportunities for my own growth and also see the privilege of knowing that I'm able to do a job that isn't only meeting KPIs, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's really impactful work yeah, that yeah. most people aren't yeah. lucky enough yeah, to do. Yeah, You're not, yeah. you know, producing tobacco right, or working right, for right, a brewery. Right, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so much bigger than that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'd, I think it's important not to lose sight yeah, of, yeah. of how important your role is yeah, in an organization yeah. like this. Yeah. It Especially was, it, because you're, you're also a voice for yes, other young people. I wanted to say that in that position, one of the things that you must not lose sight of is that mm -hmm. you have a voice. Mm -hmm. and, and that voice, not many people have. Yeah. So, so it's one thing to have a voice as a young person. Mm -hmm. It's another to have a voice sitting at an institution like NEPAD. Yeah. Uh, so maybe let's talk about what, what you lend your voice to. Mm -hmm. uh, at the current moment? What are the, those issues that you would want to lend or you're already lending your voice to? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even at con <coughs> convenings like this, I, I got to meet some incredible yeah, yeah. young people as well. Yeah. And explaining to them the projects that are being done. And I think I'd, you know, go and speak to the, to my colleagues and said you know yeah, what yeah. Um, other young Africans are doing and how yeah. can we use our resources to help yeah, them yeah, um, yeah. so I think really being able to network and seeing how getting a sense of the amazing work yeah, that, that yeah, young people yeah, are doing yeah, on the continent yeah. I'm able to right, then right, go right, back right. and convey that so what's next for for Philippa I mean I know you are still <laughs> you know, yeah. in the early part of your career. Yeah. But you, you, it sounds like you have gained so much wisdom and knowledge yeah. uh, to an extent that your path is clear. Yeah. So what's next for, for Felipe? Let's say the next 10, 15 years. So, I mean, I did say I'd like to complete a yeah. master's. So yeah. within the next five yeah. years yeah. before I'm 30. Right. And then, of course, you know, try my best to grow in the organization. Yeah. yeah. Um, be able to make a bigger impact. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe have a project that I'm specifically focused on. Right, right. Um, hopefully in this youth development or social protection, yeah, gender, yeah, yeah. those fields that I've really become yeah. passionate about. So I think I'll just work hard to improve myself and improve my yeah. knowledge in those yeah. spaces. Yeah. So for people who are listening and hearing all these things that you are doing and some of the wisdom that you are giving out and they are asking themselves, who is she? <laughs> so who is Philippa Lawrence? I just say, you know, I'm a young South African girl um, who has been privileged enough to get this amazing opportunity. And I'm finding my way. It's yeah. not always easy. Yeah. But I'm trying not to lose sight of the importance and the privilege that it is to be in the position yeah. that yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just try my best every day. Um, <clears throat> And yeah. Yeah. And of course, we said you, you know, you grew up with a, almost like a politically inclined family. Yeah, I definitely um, did. And would you say some of those values and some of that history uh, in many mm. ways drives and shapes the, the kind of a person that you are today? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like yeah. I grew up around family, yeah. you know, yeah. there was always the topic. Like I said, my grandfather was a, a journalist yeah. and so writing yeah. and, and yeah. reading yeah. and you know, jazz and all those things that were yeah, a part yeah, of, of yeah, that time, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. in Cape Town. So yeah. it's definitely always been a background conversation. Right, 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 yeah. right. Thank you so much, Philippa, for making the time. I know it's a bit late and yeah, <laughs> thank you for your patience and for waiting. Actually, this is a testament to what I'm listening and hearing that, you know, you are driven, but you're also patient. Uh, <laughs> and I think that's a good, uh, yeah. you know, uh, attribute mm -hmm. because, you know, life is not predictable. Yeah. Life is full of twists and turns, mm -hmm. and the the earlier you you build your patience, mm -hmm. uh, the better because you know the world will throw us all sorts of things. And I think part of surviving the world is just being patient and taking a step back, yeah. and just watching as things happen, and then yeah. coming back now with a clearer vision. Mm -hmm. And so I think you've got all of that. And so mm -hmm. I just want to validate uh, that <laughs> from my perspective. But thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you so much for making it to 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 Mombasa. I know that uh, the last time you were meant to join us in Accra, yeah. 
Yeah. yeah things <laughs> didn't happen. Yeah, you know, you had to have an unfortunate incident. Yeah. Um, that almost crippled you. Yeah. Uh, but it's I'm happy. I, I, I saw you. I, I saw you. Now you don't have crashes. You are yeah. working nicely. <laughs> So, so basically, you, you, yeah. I mean, you, 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 are, you are healing, and yeah, uh, and exactly. you are saying it's part of character development. Character development. <laughs> it's a story to tell. <laughs> By the way, this also happened in yeah, my yeah, journey. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but for me, it will always be something that uh, <laughs> when I think about, it's like we are the ones who had invited her to this <laughs> meeting, and she didn't yeah. even end up making it. Just that, I, you know, someone could easily would have given up. You know, yeah. because you know you have your own you're on this trip all the way to yeah. Accra and midway midway in in in, in yeah. Chigali, you have to go back to South Africa. Yeah. And then here we are, we are inviting you again, <laughs> <laughs> and you take the chance again to come. Yeah. So so thank you for that. Uh, so that was Philippa Lawrence from the African Union Development Agency Nepart uh, joining us here on the sidelines of this meeting taking place in Mombasa. Um, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the Capsi podcast series, Conversations on African Philanthropy.